Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Demetrius Sacropolis. I know, a, a large surname, right? <laughs> um, Happy New Year. Let's hope 2022 is a better year for everybody. And um, I wanted to start out the year with a small little introduction to a new course that I have built. For those of you who want to harness the power of Google and the way Google does searching. And also for those of you who are security professionals, cybersecurity professionals like myself, who perform penetration tests and do digital forensics for companies, I have some additional very cool search strings for you for your work. As long as you're authorized and you're allowed to do the kind of testing for a website or a domain, then these are the search strings for you. So I wanted to break down this little course. It'll be available on the details shown below and uh, it's an online self-paced course you can do it anytime you want and um, a really nice simple course to do it's going to have 20 lessons the course is less than 10 pounds really cheap nothing complicated and uh, it's something to just build your skills introduce you into the world of google searching really powerful searching and how you can tweak the searches to find some really interesting information online so let me give you a quick breakdown um, i have it sitting in front of me that's why my eyes move left and right and um, i'll show you what kind of information is involved so in the lessons that we have there's 20 lessons the first lesson is how to find indexing so you know, there's, there's certain ways that Google indexes search pages and, and sort of web pages. So you want to know how the indexing works, the kind of indexing that's happened, how the searches get found. So you want to see the, the, the indexing of sites. Very, very useful because you can find sites and pages a lot quicker that way and a lot more accurately. Then the second lesson is, you know, it, it, the world today is mostly using secure sites as in like HTTPS, right? But, you know, what about trying to find websites that don't have secure web pages, like non-HTTPS, you know, normal HTTP. Not that easy, actually. So a very powerful search that can actually find that information for you. Now, lesson three was very useful, and it's one of my favorite things to do when I'm doing forensics. And that is, you can use the search to find duplicate content. Now, how, how, why is this powerful? Well, I get a lot of clients coming to me saying to me, you know, um, this organization is is using my content or I have to do forensics on a company and I want to find out if there's been a copyright violation or you want to know from a cybersecurity professional has a hacker or a malicious group of people, have they copied your website? Have they taken content from your site and duplicated it and used it somewhere else? Or even better, if you've put out an article and someone's taken that information from the article and has copied that article and reposted it online. You know, that's that's not really ethical. That's, first of all, it's a copyright violation. So you want to find that duplicate content. It's an extremely powerful search. It's on lesson three. I love that search. Then lesson four is finding files, finding a particular file on a domain, on a website. Very useful. You can search for all kinds of files, okay? Lesson five is to find guest posts. Very useful if you're a social media person and you want to know what posts on the internet have been posted by a particular person. Very powerful way of searching for things because you can target um, specific area of websites and also you can look for the right posts for that particular person. And, and it's a very useful thing to, uh, to, to use for marketing purposes really at the end of the day. Just don't do it badly. Don't use it for stalking purposes. That's not really ethical, is it? Now, lesson six, very useful, and it's to find resource pages. In other words, you want to find websites that have valuable resources for learning things, for picking up new content, right? For, for learning new things in life. Very, very useful. Then uh, lesson seven, find uh, infographics. You know, a lot of sites have beautiful graphics or infographics, graphics that have information in them, but you might not be able to use them. So you want to use a search that can find websites that have got infographics, but allow you to use the content, you know, so there's no copyright violation. Very useful search, especially if you do presentations and documentation and so on. Um, the next thing is lesson eight is to find link prospects. In other words, how do links get used on sites and how do they prospect other sites? How do they connect to the sites? Is, is there any potential prospects out of those links? 
can we find other sort of relationships with companies very useful if you're doing open source intelligence gathering like in forensics then uh Another one of my favorites, lesson number nine, is to find social media profiles. Now, you've got to be a bit cautious with this one, but you can search for particular social media profiles, people on social media, basically. Now, why would this be useful? Well, let's say you want to find an influencer. Let's say you want to find a particular person that can assist you in your marketing, in your pushing your products, or somebody that has very similar sort of likes and, 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 and enjoys certain types of brands and whatever the same as you. Or you want to build a community of like-minded people. It's a very, very powerful search. Just again, once again, please be cautious and be careful how you use these searches. You know, I do not condone unethical practices when it comes to these searches. You know, use your brain, you know, use your ethics behind you. Make sure you do things correctly. Okay. Now, lesson number 10, very, very useful tool, finding internal linking. How, how do sites link internally, but like with other systems that they're using? Very useful for, for security reasons. Uh, number 11, lesson 11 is finding PR links public relations links useful from an aspect of your know, PR obviously and marketing and also you want to know how a company or product is being pushed out in the industry very useful okay lesson number 12 uh, finding sponsored posts very very useful if you're into the e-commerce world and you want to know which particular posts are being sponsored and which are not um, it's important I mean we need advertising for products otherwise products would have a massive price you know it wouldn't be very valid for us to not have advertising but you want to find those sponsored products because you want to see how products are being advertised and you want to see if you've got a product that's very similar you want to align yourself towards those products so that you can have the best opportunity to work in the same market um, just again be careful don't use this unethically another very very useful and, 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 and helpful search and this has been given to me by a couple of students that I've met along the way because I also teach as well and that is uh, finding questions and answers posts in other words anybody online who's posting a questions and answer very useful because it's great for research purposes uh, phenomenal because you can find the questions and the answers for those and that's specific to those posts okay great search for google then finding new content that's been published i mean that's almost invaluable for uh marketing purposes you want to know when something new comes out you want to know when some new content is known by google uh, about a particular product or a brand or, or a service very useful uh, uh, search uh, criteria for that then lesson 15 site linking you want to find sites that are being linked to that site this is exceptionally powerful when it comes to forensics and cybersecurity because you want to know what other links that site links to and you want to see how things work it's also quite useful if you want to see how search engine optimization works for a particular site then lesson 16 from from now onwards from 16 onwards a lot of these are going to be specifically designed for cyber security professionals and this is where you have to draw the line a little bit uh, most of you are going to use from lesson 16 to 20 you'll probably be authorized up front by the company that you'll be testing with you'd have to have the permission basically you need to sign all your contracts all your agreements rules of engagement non-disclosure agreements all that and then you may be able to take this information um, and then really harness these skills. So one of the most important things I do as a penetration tester, obviously, once I've tested all my systems, which I'm actually currently doing this week, uh, I've got a penetration test I'm working with for a company in, in Tanzania, which is nice. You know, the last thing you want to find is any leaked out penetration test reports from the past about that company i mean you know penetration testers do a great job in the world i mean they are there to be proactive they're there to check the security of the company and assist the company into you know making sure they mitigate those risks reduce them as much as possible and sort out the security of the company and a website and the domain and their systems and their servers and their applications but the last thing you want to find is older or current penetration test reports online I mean that stuff should not be online okay so i mean it's valuable information for an attacker right so if you want to use a google search and you want to find left behind penetration test reports 
lesson number 16 is for you. It is extremely powerful search. Again, use it with, you know, discretion. Make sure you are doing it ethically. And please understand, it's very, very, very interesting because you will find some interesting stuff left behind. Lesson 17, again, it's a security thing. Uh, finding database credentials. You know, a lot of systems today use databases for whatever reason, you know, shopping systems or back-end systems or content management systems. It doesn't really matter. You know, login and credentials, authentication systems. The thing is, when it comes to databases, there's so many databases out there, but also a lot of them don't have built-in security. So what you can do is you can use Google to search for the credentials being used to log into databases. And that could just be left behind on a site. That could be sitting on a document. It could be sitting in a little file. And you wanna see, you wanna find those. So very powerful search. And uh, lesson 18, uh, one of my favorites is finding vulnerable web servers. On the, on the internet. And that is an extremely powerful thing for penetration testers, security professionals, because you want to look for vulnerable servers. Now, of course, you know, you, you've got to have the permission to do this, but at the same time, you can uh, tag the information correctly in the search. So you can search for that particular system you're looking for to find out if it's actually a vulnerable server or not. And it's a very powerful search from Google. Then um, lesson 19, a great sort of lesson and that is to find source code or any kind of connection string that might be used to talking to a back-end system or a database very very powerful for for sort of programmers developers database administrators that kind of thing and of course one of my personal favorites if not my favorite and that is lesson 20 and that is to find documents with credentials finding documents that have been left behind on the internet which have user credentials usernames and passwords is a, a crazy thing and and it's so frequent that it, it, it's actually quite worrying so you want to know how to search for that because you want to find out, are your credentials leaked out on the internet? Do you potentially have some of your usernames and passwords on the internet? Are they leaked out? Oh, you better change your credentials then. But also more importantly, you want to tag that against a particular company to see, are there any documents about the company that have been left behind that have user credentials? This is specific to, you know, doing penetration testing and security testing. So these are the lessons, the 20 lessons. And um, hopefully you will use this course to sort of harness your skills with Google searching. And in this case, again, you'll see the details at the bottom here. This is all based on the Google hacking database, GHDB, which has been around for years and years. And, and it's part of Google, it's part of the search strings of Google. And you can do a lot more than that. I mean, I'm only picking 20 odd lessons here, but there's something like 6,000 strings that you can use. So if there's anything else that you're interested in and you'd like me to add to this course, let me know. Give me some feedback. The details are at the bottom. And uh, if not, enjoy the course. Have some fun with it. Please be ethical. Please understand that some of these searches are extremely dangerous. But more importantly, it's not dangerous from any kind of perspective of breaking into a system. No, it's just that what you do with that information is important. You need to have the right ethics and you need to have the permission in some cases, some of the modules 16 to 20, where you're going to need permission from a company to be able to use that information, okay? To be able to submit it and use it and secure a company, basically. So have some fun with the course, enjoy it, and uh, remember to be ethical and above all, let me know how it goes. All right, thanks everyone. Hopefully you enjoy the course and uh, it is going to be called the Google Doc Search Specialist. That's a very simple course. It'll be available online. Like I said earlier, you'll see the details at the bottom. Self-study, you can do it anytime you want and then just follow on with your Google search page as a secondary window when you're, it, when you're working with a course. It's got audio. So you'll be able to hear the course. You don't have to just read. Okay, so it's a proper video presentation and it's got 20 modules. The curriculum is available on the details at the bottom on the website and uh, have some fun. Thanks everyone. Have a good day.